Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to the place where sports opinions collide. You've reached another episode of Dead End Sports. I'm your host, 12 Kyle. We want to thank you for tuning in as you do each and every week. This is a weekly sports podcast. We like to call it the best couple of hours of your sports week. Uh, this is the place where sports opinions collide. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I will not be doing this podcast alone. Joining me are my homies. First up, my man, Ken. Ken, what's up, man? What up, what up, what up? Um, man, just fortunate to get through uh, uh, Hurricane Ir- Irma, a tropical storm or whatever she called, man. Shout out um, to everybody out there. Um, you know, our, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Um, just just be strong. But, yeah, man, um, B's not here. He, he lost power. I don't know what's going on with Ralph. I don't know if he got affected. But, yeah, our, our roof, man. Um Started leaking. So, oh damn! Yeah, so it it, it got us. But, mm. We still here. Well, I hate I hate to hear that, man. Because that's I, I I got my roof placed last year. Sheesh, and it's something. It is something. Yeah, but I, I echo those sentiments, man. Uh, and anybody listening that was in the path of Hurricane Irma or Hurricane Harvey, for that matter, um, definitely thoughts and prayers with you. Uh, it's a, for many people, uh, it's a long road to recovery, but you know, I think it's uh, it's a whole lot easier to maintain when you're alive as opposed to not being alive. So I uh, definitely want to send a shout out to everybody that dealt with that. Uh, as Ken mentioned, uh, B's not going to make it in either FIFO, but we got the homie Q to six man filling in. Q, what up, man? What's good, Kyle? Ain't nothing. Bro, I can't uh, call it. What's, per- what's cracking? Ain't nothing going on, man. Just man, enjoying we- a week of being undefeated, you know, uh, enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still trusting the process. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, as always, man, we, we, we're we glad you were able to fill in at, at such short notice. Um, got a lot of stuff to talk about, as I mentioned at the top, man. Um, I guess let's start with uh, college football in the NFL. Uh, a lot of stuff happened this past weekend. Uh, <laughs> you could you could make a case that it was a lot of bad football this weekend. Uh, Ken, I'll start first with you, man. What, you know, in college and the NFL, what stood out to you? I think the highlight for me uh, was Oklahoma and mm. uh, and Ohio State. Um, just Baker Mayfield, what he did, the disrespect. I love every minute of it. I'm, I, you know, he shouldn't have apologized for a damn thing. I know, um, right? Because that, that's what we need, man. That's what competition is all about. Um, it's supposed to be disrespectful. Uh, Ohio State, you guys know what you guys have to do next week, next year, and you guys got to get back at them and 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 make them pay. But um, I like that. Keep that intensity up. That shows that. I mean, you're talking about guys that are playing this game that you know are not being paid. You know, getting their you know college tuition paid for, but that's it, right? So these are the moments that they can carry with them for the rest of their life. So I I I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, Clemson didn't look. As good as they did before, but Auburn surprisingly was really good. So, uh, so that's it for college football. Uh, for the NFL, like I said, very ugly. We got guys out there looking like all stars in Week One. David Johnson goes down. Uh, I know, Houston. right? Oh man, that 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 crushed a lot of people, man. Yeah, in, in fantasy football and, and the city of Arizona, um, a lot of injuries, man. Uh, Allen uh, Robinson, mm-hmm. with the Jaguars, Jaguars, he's yep. out. He's hey, done for the year. Up. Barry's done. Uh, Brady lost. That's a good thing. So <laughs> we'll always take that. Leonard Fournette and Dalvin Cook. Shout out to them brothers, man. Um, they got it in, and they look like they are going to be uh, solid professional NFL running backs. And the last thing, um, I have stood by Marvin Lewis on the show a lot. You um, have, cause cause you pro brother. I'm pro brother, man. I'm rooting for all the brothers in, in the NFL, but you have to win, you know. And, and and you have when you you have to win if you have talent. Like Todd Bowles doesn't have talent; he's expected right. to lose. Marvin Lewis has talent, and you have to win. You can't go out there in Week One and have Andy Dalton look worse than McCown and anybody uh scott tozine like he, he just looked terrible 
Um, I, was, I still support the brother, but I will no longer, depending on how the season play out, uh, it's going to be harder for me to defend him unless this, this team plays better and perform better. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it at that, man. Okay, okay, okay. What about you, Q? Uh, college and pro, man, what stood out for you? I guess um, easily – I was really impressed with the Philadelphia Eagles uh, defensive line. The corners look all right. Uh, one of our, well, our star corner, Ronald Darby, who we acquired in the Jordan Matthews trade, uh, he dislocated his ankle, but mm. thankfully it's about four to six weeks for recovery. But I imagine he'll probably be back in probably like six to nine because I'm not going to take the, uh, the under on that. They always take the over on injuries when it comes to lower extremities. Um, but, yeah, we look okay. Uh, offense needs to settle in. You need to get Alshon Jeffrey more looks. Uh, Wentz had a couple deep balls. They sailed over, and he underthrew uh, to Torrey Smith. Uh, but overall, it was a good win, and I liked what I saw from uh, Nelson Aguilar, of all people. And I'm not even going to go into why. If you're an Eagles fan, you know why that's a huge surprise. Um, number two takeaway was, I believe, Sean Payton, and Marvin Lewis need to switch head coaching jobs. Mm. Uh, I think Sean Payton can revive uh, Bengals offense. And I think that Marvin Lewis needs to go down to New Orleans and resurrect the defense that has been absolutely abysmal since that Super Bowl run. Uh, I think both these coaches are just with, with the doctor order for, the, for these cities. When I look at, what Marvin Lewis allowed to happen to his team, 20-0 to zero in the home opener, that's a fireable offense. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Now, that's not me saying that Marvin Lewis is like the worst coach in the NFL. He's far from it. And mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, he's probably top top 15, top, you know, definitely like in that, like I'd probably put him at like 11 or 12, right? Just off the consistency of his record. Yeah, but he is the time, second longest tenured coach in the league behind Belichick. Exactly, exactly. But Kyle, what I would say is that it comes a time when a coach's voice is falling on deaf ears. I agree. There's only there's only a certain amount of time that you can say next year, guys. There's only a certain finite amount of time that you have to, to say, oh, we'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? We'll get him next time. There's only so many times that you can lose to Pittsburgh at your at your house after clinching the number one seat in your in your division like it's just not it doesn't make sense so i think the city and the players just need a new coach he's earned the right to go somewhere else and be a head coach because he has a the consistency of going to the playoffs has a consistency of having a top 10 defense almost every year has the consistency of drafting great players on both sides of the ball but when you can't put the product on the field and they can't produce the need, the, the necessary results for the talent that's there, it's time to move on. Uh, number three takeaway, I feel like the Saints are completely misusing Adrian Peterson. I'm sure we'll get into that later. Uh, I only have five things, by the way. Uh, number four, oh, man, I, love, <laughs> I, love, I love what I saw from uh, Baker Mayfield. That was amazing. That was hilarious. Uh, I like when players are disrespectful, man. I like villains. I like guys who are cocky and can back it up. I don't like guys who are timid. And, you know, I feel like I feel like players in all sports nowadays, aside from boxing, aside from MMA, those like you know br- bravado sports. I feel like sports nowadays is very, you know, so, clean cut. Everyone so has dude. to, be, you know, yeah, like everyone, everyone got, everyone has to be completely PC. No, oh that, oh you know, it's always the. You know, the, the uh, speech coach telling you, OK, now when you go into this interview, tell them that you respect their program and they have a, a collection of great players. I would lo- I would just love to hear a player say, you know what, F their team. <laughs> like, honestly, like they, 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 it's, it's a bunch of punks on, on the defense and I'm going to go out there and put 45 on them. I would love to hear that. So for Baker Mayfield to take the flag and put it on the O. I love it, man. It was like some 300 Spartan stuff. Like, you know, what I'm saying like I love that. But um. That's my number four takeaway. And number five is Odell Beckham and Andrew Luck deserve all the money in the world. Um, this take is very simple. The Giants look absolutely abysmal without o- o- Odell Beckham. 
Now, this is coupled with a lot of things because they have a horrendous uh, left tackle at Eric Flowers. Yeah. I believe he's a, he's, a, he's a left tackle. And they have no push up front. Now, you cannot do anything in the NFL if you can't run, run the ball. Regardless of how we devalue running backs in the NFL, yes, you can do running back com- by committee and win, which is evident by Cincinnati in past years with Giovanni Bernard and uh, I forget the number 32, whatever his name was. But, and now they have Joe Mixon now, so they have, they have a running back by committee, and you're seeing what New Orleans is trying to do. But you still need to be able to run the ball, regardless of what the name on the back of the jersey is. Paul Perkins has no room to run. Eli Manning has no time to throw. And then when he does have time to throw, guys like Brandon Marshall and Ingram and guys like Shepard can't get open. And then I saw Dallas playing cover two the, the, the entire game, Kyle. <laughs> and Brandon Marshall couldn't get open. That's because mm-hmm. you're you're going to bring four every time and sit two outside because they know that you can keep the pocket collapsing every single time because they don't have a left tackle. You, you you can bring pressure from from the side every time. So what I'm seeing now is that Odell deserves all the money in the world because if that is how your offense is without your number one star, then you then you, need, you probably need to pay him what he did deserves and he's probably not going to come back until he's 110 percent healthy right i w- and i wouldn't either because i'm not going to risk my chance of getting hurt and now the team can bargain me down for my starting offer and then also for for, for this point um, andrew luck same thing the, the colts are absolutely disgraceful i said three years ago chuck pagano has to go um i just don't think he grasps what he has in andrew luck and ty hilton I feel like they should have the most yards between two players, a uh, quarterback and wide receiver in the top two every single year. But instead, they're mediocre. On defense, for the last four years, they have not been able to find anything to salvage a uh, possible good defense. On the offensive end, on the offensive line, they've been abysmal. And that's why Andrew Luck has taken the most hits of any quarterback in the last five years. And where is he at right now? And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about that. And that's why you have to pay your guys for the value that they are. If they're that valuable, then you've got to pay them. I understand that teams are going to do what's best for the team because this is a business. But if your product goes out on the field and put, gets 46 points put up on them by Jared Goff, <laughs> then, dog, you might have some bigger problems. Oh, that's a great point, man. Great point. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I got uh, I got quite a few, man. I, th- I think well, starting first with college, I thought um, uh, Lamar Jackson was incredible. Um, granted, he was playing against North Carolina, but I think he put up like I think he threw for three touchdowns and he ran for another three, uh, and that was a game on the road, which you know North Carolina is not a, not necessarily an easy place to play, uh, but we do get to see you know Lamar Jackson on full display this coming week. Uh, as they play, if, if I'm not mistaken, they host Clemson this weekend. Um, that should be the game of the week uh, in college football. So uh, I, I thought that was I thought he did a, a great job. Um, I was surprised to see uh, Georgia go into Notre Dame and get a win. Um, not that you know it's impossible, but you know Georgia is a team that, relatively speaking, has not going outside of the conference to play that caliber of school, or at least that type of reputation. Uh, and then to go into South Bend and get a win. And if you saw any parts of that game, um, it really sounded like a home game for Georgia, um, which is weird to me because you think of the fans in South Bend, but a lot of folks from Georgia, a lot of, you know, quote unquote, the Bulldog Nation went up there to uh, show their support to the, to the, to the Bulldogs. And, you know, they ended up making it sound like a, like, you know, and, the Georgia head coach, uh, Kirby Smart, also commented after the game. He said, you know, our quarterbacks were able to, you know, get their signals out and everything like that because it wasn't that loud. So, you know, anytime you can go on the road in college and take over another team stadium, uh, you know, that's a big thing. Uh, as you guys mentioned, Baker Mayfield, he has no reason to apologize. If you have if you take issue with what Baker Mayfield did as far as uh, trying to, you know, stamp the uh, Oklahoma flag in the uh, at, at Ohio State Stadium, then I think that's sucker, man. You, you're a sucker because it, it's my thing is this. If you don't want teams to opposing teams to celebrate on your field, 
then beat them. I mean, I, I, like you said, I, I'm not with, I, maybe it's because we came up in a different era, but I'm not really with all that peace. I, now, I'm not about disrespecting your opponent, but, you know, if you want to talk a little trash, if you can back it up, hey, psh, what, what can you do? You know, so I had no problem with it. And, I, and I'm sure Oklahoma made him, you know, apologize, but he doesn't, he doesn't owe me an apology at all. He kicked Ohio State's ass. And, you know, Ohio State, you know, we saw them struggle in week one and, you know, they fought back and won the game. And then they struggled, you know, uh, and, and looked bad, in particular, the quarterback. Um, you know, he's got to get it together because uh, he's not looking good at all. Um, but, yeah, those are some of the things that stood out as far as uh, college football. Um, NFL, I always say, and, we, and we, we've talked about it previous years, um, you really don't know what a team is until like week four, week five. Uh, keep in mind that, and we saw a lot of guys, we saw, saw a ton of guys get hurt. So a lot of guys cramping up, same with college, but more so in the pros, you got to keep in mind that, you know, for most of the people that played on Sunday and Thursday and, and Monday, um, this was their first game. Nobody played a full game during the preseason. So you see guys getting hurt. You see guys cramping up. Um, and (laughs) just from the looks of it, some of these guys could have used more work, could have gotten more work in the, in the uh, preseason. Uh, as Q mentioned, the Giants' offensive line awful. I mean, just awful. Uh, and and who was that? I think Jacksonville recorded ten sacks. And I don't, I don't think I ever remember a team recording ten sacks in a game. Um, you know, so to get ten sacks uh, says a lot for defense. I I can't, and I'll have to pull it up and see who they played. But um. You know, but yeah, the offensive line, I saw a lot of bad offensive line play. So a lot of trashy quarterbacks on Sunday. Uh, to be honest, the the football that we saw on Saturday was a lot better than the football we saw on Sunday. So a lot of sloppy play. Um, New England looked bad. I mean, I'm not going to push the panic button. The, the New England still plays in the AFC East. So, I mean, they could, they could go 9-7 and seven and win that division. I mean, I don't think they're going 9-7, and seven, but... Oh, New England looked bad, uh, and I think <laughs> I think Ken had the uh, the dopest uh, text of the week. He said New England lost last night. I slept so well. <laughs> so so um, but yeah, I I'm not um I, I'm not gonna I don't jump too high off the bandwagon or you know dump on a team when it's just been one week. But um, you know, like I said, it was it was some bad quarterback play. It was some bad offensive line play. Uh, oh, one other thing from college. Uh, Ken, you say you support the brothers. Uh, one brother that's in trouble, um, Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. Uh, he is in some very bad trouble. Uh, yeah. Obviously, them them blowing the lead at UCLA and then struggling mightily with uh, Nickel State uh, this past Saturday. It's not looking – and then to make the matters worse, which has nothing to do with his performance, but some racist asshole sent – um, sent him some hate mail uh, to his house, uh, which there's no room for any of that foolishness, you know. And and you know we've said it before, and I'm gonna say it again, you know, these people that do dumb stuff like that, don't don't let these people, don't particularly don't let your president get you fucked up, because it can't happen. <laughs> so don't think that people people not going for that. So you can, you know, some people think that they can, you know, hide behind the anonymity of the 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 internet. No, people can find you. So, you know, don't just take my words <laughs> as advice. Uh but getting back to the NFL, um like I said a couple of things stood out. Uh like you said Dallas looked good, the Giants offensive line would look terrible. Uh Sam freaking Bradford uh single-handedly killed me in fantasy football. Uh, Sam Bradford looked very good. Sam, the combination of Sam Bradford, Dalvin Cook, and um, that receiver Thielen uh, looked very good uh, on you know uh, what was that Monday Night Football. Um, but other than that, man, it was like I said, it wasn't necessarily a great week of football. Uh, and shout out to Alex Smith, Alex freaking Smith. I mean, like he looked like Alex Smith. If you if you want to keep it one hundred, boy, turn Alex, up. yeah, he he outplayed Brady. You know, he really, really outplayed Brady. Uh, so, and, and and speaking of, before I get off of offensive lines too as well, last point, uh, Seattle. I don't know what the hell is going on with Seattle, but, man, they look 
terrible. Russell Wilson was sacked three times. He was hit another the seven times. Um, the running backs only averaged uh, 53 yards. Um, excuse me, they only gained 53 yards. So I don't know what's going on in Seattle, but they better fix it, man, because they look. And again, it was one game. You know, it was against Green. It was at Green Bay at Lambeau. Um, but yeah, they look bad, man. They look really, really bad. So we'll see what happens. Uh, a couple of, you know, some good games coming up this week. We got a quarterback shuffle already as uh, Deshaun Watson has been named the starting quarterback for the uh, Houston Texans. Yes, uh, at, <laughs> and uh, and uh, we don't know what the hell is going on in Indianapolis as the uh, the Colts uh, have somewhat of a I think they right now they have a quarterback uh shuffle going on as well so we'll see what happens again it's only week one of the nfl uh so if your team came out and looked bad you know it's okay but you know after about four or five weeks you pretty much know who your team is now speaking of the colts uh andrew luck man uh we got word that he could be now we know he had surgery in the offseason he could be out at least until october um Q, I got two questions for you, and you you touched on it a little bit earlier. Is it too late to say the season is over for the Colts because they had Tolzien out there starting, and then they ended up subsequently pulling him and inserting uh, Jacoby Brissett, who came over from the Patriots, I think, like a week ago. So he's only been there a week. So the question is, is it too early to say the season is over for the Colts? And is Andrew Luck washed up? No, nah, man, it's definitely not. Uh, the thing is, is that – the division is like terrible. Like the entire division is horrendous. Aside from Tennessee, who I'm not a believer in, I don't think that there's any one team that's dominant. Um, if you can point to a quarterback in that division besides Mariota, who I who I loved in Oregon, and I actually think he's a pretty capable quarterback, I don't believe that there is one like you know purebred in that in that division. If that's if you get what I'm saying, so. Mm-hmm. What I'm, I guess, I guess my, I guess my overall point here is that um, it's not, it's not too late, but it doesn't look good mm-hmm. because the strength of the, the strength of the teams in the division, you have Jacksonville, who Blake Bortles, I don't trust him at all. <laughs> I, I think, I think he's absolutely terrible. Um, there's, this, there's this hilarious Twitter account called Blake Bortles Facts oh, that I uh, looked up. And uh, it's like just, you know, it's just like goofy things like Blake Bortles and Tom Brady have four MVPs between, you know, each of them and whatnot. And like uh, it's just it's like Blake Bortles and Eli Manning both have uh, between them two, uh, two Super Bowl rings, just things that Blake Bortles doesn't have. But, you know, they uh, couple them with people who do have them. Hilarious. But Jacksonville's defense is good. They have a good front seven. I love uh, Jalen Ramsey. He's the sassiest corner in the NFL. Um, like honestly, his quotes are hilarious. Um, then you have, like I said, Tennessee Mariota, like his game. He's kind of like a diet Alex Smith, if that's if that's even possible. But at the same time, he's faster than Alex Smith, and, and I'd probably say he's just as accurate. So you have him, but then that defensive side of the ball, they're not you know anything to write home about. So mm-hmm. you can keep yourself in the game against Tennessee. Just don't let Mariota run wild. Then you have the Texans, who they are playing QB roulette. They're they're just <laughs> throwing, you know, they're 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 just throwing darts at the board, saying, "Oh, one week it'll be Savage. One week it's going to be Deshaun Watson." I think they should let Deshaun Watson uh, ride this out. But you know, Savage's even though we're probably going to get. Bro. He, he's, he's not com- he's not coming back and he honestly should man he like he was absolutely horrendous and the ball did move and Deshaun Watson does one thing that a lot of quarterbacks like Tom Savage who are by that I mean terrible quarterbacks uh those type of quarterbacks that don't do they get the ball to the top uh offensive player Deshaun Watson targeted um DeAndre Hopkins like almost every time he was out there, he was looking his way. He was looking to get him the ball. Tom Savage didn't even look DeAndre's way like more more than like twice. So I just don't like Tom Savage's QB play. But their defense on that side is dominant. But this is where the Colts' dilemma is. The Colts aren't respectable on either side of the ball. 
they're just not. They they drafted a bust in Philip Dorsett, which I believe they're not using him right, and I think that Belichick got a steal for him. And now they're going to probably start Jacoby Brissett, who only under Bill Belichick to me is a capable NFL quarterback. What are you going to do? Just run, run, run pass option every single play? Are you just going to run mm. option every single play? That's just not going to work in the NFL to get you at least seven games. I think seven games truly can win this division. I think eight games can win this division because I think all four teams have fatal flaws. For Jacksonville, like, like I said, it's portals. For Tennessee, it's their defense. For uh, Houston, it's the quarterback play. And it might be Bill, Bill, Bill O'Brien's uh, pride also. And then for the Colts, it's both sides of the ball. So it's really just pick your poison with which team you put your faith in. For Luck, I don't think he, sh- he should come back until he's 100% healthy either, Kyle, because let me ask you something. Would you put your health at risk just so you can win that division to get spanked <laughs> by, by, by by the Patriots in the first round? Uh, probably Would not. You- exactly, because you're going to wait till you're 100% healthy, you got your back, you got your legs, you got your head in order, and then go back out there next year, get a nice little draft pick, draft you a good offensive lineman, which I still hate it. If you go back and watch uh, the old um, Dead in Sports, uh, I, I remember I called in and I said I hated the Philip Dor- Dorsett pick because it did not address the defensive line or the offensive line. And right on schedule, two years later, Andrew Luck is hurt. So, uh, Ursay got got to go. And I know they just got a new uh, GM and owner, but they both got to go because this is just ridiculous, man. 46 to 6 to Jared Goff. Jared Goff, Kyle. Mm. Mm, mm, <laughs> like, mm. It's really Jared Goff. We were questioning if Jared Goff was even belonging in the NFL last year, right? And and forty six to what six it was? Nah, dude, don't come back, Luck. Don't come back. No doubt, no doubt. What about you, Ken? Uh, luck, man, he is it, bad luck right now. He could be out. We know he had the off season surgery. Uh, he could be out until late November. Uh, is the season over for the Colts? And do you think Andrew Luck's washed up? Yeah, it's over. It's over. Um, that team moved behind Andrew Luck. I mean, we, we know that now. We can see that now. They look completely pathetic without him. And um, at his talent alone won them games. And um, very Peyton Manning-like in the sense that he's able to um, – offset or overcome the deficiencies that the Colts have, you know, on defense. So, for me, I think it's over. Tozine, we already know, man. We, we talked about him. He, he looks absolutely terrible. Um, I'm with Q. Brissett, I mean, Colts just – I mean, they just pretty much just traded pieces that they need the team we're going to use anyway. So, um, if – Belichick can get something out of out of Dorsett. He will if he won't, then Dorsett is done. He's out of the league. For Brissett, that's clearly a move because they don't want to sign Colin Kaepernick. So Andrew Luck is not washed up at all, man. He just hasn't been healthy. And if he can get healthy, then he can go out and prove that he isn't washed up. So, um, so yeah. I think. Um... Is it too early to say to see? It's all. It's always too early to say something. I mean, it's just one game. But based on what I see, um, I don't like what I see, man, from the Colts. I, I think you know they have really struggled to put playmakers around uh, Luck, and um, you know, with him being down now, and and then you got to keep in mind too, not just putting playmakers around him, but. When we last saw Luck, he didn't look that good either. So, you know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You know, you're, you're looking at, you're trying to assess Luck, and then you're trying to assess the team that's around him. I mean, he's got T.Y., but other than that, I mean, like, you know, and I know they tried to bring in Richardson, and that didn't work. And, I mean, you got Frank Gore. Frank Gore is, Frank Gore is about as old as me. So, you know, it's just, you know, it, only because they're in this division, that's the only reason why I won't say that it's that that the season is over. Because uh, truthfully, the winner of this this division could be seven and nine, right? So if that happens, then you know if you get luck back and let's say they're I don't know one and four, 
you, you still got a shot. You know, as crazy as it may sound. And you put them in any other division in the NFL and, you, and, and they're done. You know, you stick a fork in them. Um, is Luck washed up? He's not washed up, but the last time that we saw him, he didn't look good. And I don't know if he didn't look good because is he not as good as we thought he was or was he hurt the last time that we saw him? Um, and I think time will tell on that one. Um, but what's interesting is, and I was sitting there thinking about it today, is that, you know, I think back to 2012, who were the two quarterbacks coming out of the 2012 draft that were like, quote unquote, can't miss prospects? Andrew Luck and RG3. <clears throat> Andrew Luck is, you know, hurt with a bum shoulder and, you know, we just, you know, we, we know he's coming back at some point, but he's but like you you like you said, Q, he might not come back until he's a hundred percent. We know about the struggles that RG three has had, you know, with his uh knees and everything. And RG three's not even in the league anymore. I saw a video of RG three shooting hoops. You know, uh, it looked pretty bad, but he was shooting hoops. This guy's posting Instagram videos of him shooting hoops and he doesn't even play basketball. So I don't know, man. So, I mean, R- I don't know if RG, I, I really don't know the reason why he posted the, the videos of him shooting hoops and he's out there. He got the hoodie on like uh, mellow. And I'm like, OK, RG, what are you doing? I mean, like if you want teams to and, I, and I'm, I'm sure that teams understand that you're out there, but maybe they just, you know, they're not checking for you like that. Um, So, yeah. Tw- and it was. It's crazy when you think about it, because that was 2012, and here we are in 2017. You know, it was all ju- it was all good just a week ago, and you know, RG3 is posting IG videos, and Andrew Luck is just watching. So it's too early to say he's washed up. I mean, he's got his money, but it ain't looking good. So hopefully, we'll see a better Andrew Luck when he comes back. Um, but I agree with Q. I don't think we're going to see him one minute before he's he's 100 uh, percent. You know, no matter what the Colts record is, they'll still be in the hunt for the division by the time he comes back. Uh, Chuck Pagano, he might not be around. So we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, as we mentioned a little earlier, uh, Colin Kaepernick is back in the news, uh, not because of anything he did, but, you know, uh Colin Kaepernick seems to stay in the news even when he's not doing anything. Uh, as you all know, Colin Kaepernick has not been signed. Um, this past week, man, a couple of people spoke on Colin Kaepernick uh, or spoke about him, if, if you will. Uh, the first is Roger Goodell. Uh, someone asked Roger Goodell uh, about Colin Kaepernick and him not being in the NFL. And Roger Goodell said, and I quote, I'm not a football expert. I don't know why Colin Kaepernick isn't in the NFL. Close quote. And then there was Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis said that, quote, the Ravens were about to sign Kaepernick until his girlfriend posted a racist tweet about Ray Lewis and the owner. Close quote. Now, if you missed the tweet, it was a picture of there was a picture, two pictures, one picture at the top, one picture at the bottom. First picture at the top was um, I think I guess the guy what's the guy's name? Steven and and uh, in, in the movie Django and the slave owner. And. The picture beneath it was a picture of the Ravens owner being hugged by Ray Lewis. Um, So my question is, Q, who told a bigger lie, Roger Goodell or Ray Lewis? (laughs) (laughs) Kyle, man, both of these instances are absolutely ridiculous. First of all, Roger Goodell saying that is like somebody who got into a car accident and in, in a Honda going to the head of Honda being like, hey, this is a problem. And then the head of Honda says, I'm not a car expert. <laughs> so it's like, what what is this? What is this? I'm I'm so disgusted because every single time these comments come out from people, I just realize just just how brainwashed some people are and how money can really corrupt people and really make people forget where the hell they came from. Cause it's like rails of all people do. You should understand what it feels like to be in a situation in which people are projecting something on you that you believe was false. Now we don't know where 
jacket went to, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, but what we do know is that, <laughs> but, what, but what we do know is that Colin Kaepernick has said from day one that he's doing this to stand up against oppression. He's doing this to stand up against murderous police, police who murder people who are unarmed, people who are innocent. This was never something to go against the military. This wasn't, you know, a desecration of what people view to be American values. This wasn't an attack on people's way of life. This was an attack on injustice. And people are to this day going hard on Colin Kaepernick because of the way he's doing it. And in my opinion, you already know how I, how I feel. It's probably one of the most courageous things that you could do as an athlete to take a stand by sitting. And instead, people are vil- vilifying him, and we're seeing that effect now. Now, to directly answer your question, uh, Ray Lewis has been doing a dramatic reading for 12 Years a Slave on TV for the past couple <laughs> weeks. And... I'm just absolutely stunned, man. He just keeps on bucking his eyes, tap dancing, and cutting a jig every time one of either Skip or Shannon asks him, so why does the Baltimore owner not bring him in for a workout? And then Ray come out and say, I mean, well, you know, um, uh, he know he know likes to do all that. Like, dude, like, are you serious at this point? What 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 we're seeing now with Ray Lewis is the fact that Ray Lewis is trying to protect his job because Ray Lewis knows that from the time that he was he stood his trial, he has to fall in line and be a good one and not stir and shake shake the table or stir the pot because then he already knows that history strikes you know, are already off off the table. He's already on that third strike. So mm-hmm. if he comes out and tries to be a militant black man, they don't come after him the way that they came after him when he lost that jacket. So so let me ask you this. Now, you, not to, not to cut you off, let, let me ask you this, just to your, your point right there. Why not say if they say okay, well Ray, why why haven't why isn't ba- why isn't Baltimore looking to sign Kaepernick? Why not say right. I don't know? I mean, that would be exactly. sim- that would be the simplest answer, I would think. And then you don't have to worry about straddling exactly. the fence. You can just kind of play the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you see, Kyle, that's that's the thing. No, no, you're perfectly fine. That's 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 the thing, Kyle. Like a lot of these guys, I don't want to get into a place where um, I'm projecting what the people, but there is a lot of times where in black male athletes' lives, their coaches. GMs and the owners of the teams that, that they play for become almost sort of a famous tool. Meaning in which if you grew up in a household that either had a no father figure or low father, you know, involvement in your life or just no real parental involvement in your life at all, and you grew up on the football field and your coaches from Pee Wee to high school to middle school, you know what I'm saying, all the guys who groomed you to become the man that you are now and a man who gave you that 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 shot to become the star that, that you are as you became Ray Lewis and the guy who drafted you, you look at that guy as like the dude who kind of made you. You know, you, if, if that's making any sense. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of these guys, they project this father figure mm-hmm. um, title onto um, guys, I can't even think of the name of the uh, Baltimore owner, but they project that onto them. And they are willing to protect him at all costs because, no, don't say that about him because he's a good man. I've, I've been behind the scenes with him. I know his heart. Or at least you think that's what you know. But I'm going to end this very, very, very soundly with this. At the end of the day, there's a reason why he's your owner. And just understand that he views you as product to put out there to be sold. You don't owe any loyalty to somebody who's not acting in accordance with how the NFL should be run. And that means giving a fair shot to talent to prove itself. Understand that he's your owner for a reason, but don't mean that you got to treat him like he's your owner. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, what about you, Ken? Uh, your take, man. Who, who told a bigger lie, Goodell 
Ray Lewis, or, or, or do you see see them as the same? Um, <laughs> man, Q, man, it's like, hey, 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 um, Ray Lewis, come in here and, and and tell me about this Negro out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, can, can, can we get can we keep this boy in line? You know, you call a black guy, <laughs> um. Ray Lewis, man, I I, I don't want to say that the brother the brother's lying. Um, I, I I'm not a hundred percent certain. I'm disturbed by him saying this like now, and I, I I looked at this as as him pretty much ending Colin Kaepernick's career. You know because mm. he knows how this was gonna play out, and. If he really cared about getting Colin a job, he would have kept that behind the scenes. He mm-hmm. wouldn't have leaked it to Stephen A. Smith a month ago, and it w- and when it didn't take the way he thought it would, because Stephen A. Smith said it, but nobody jumped on it. He came out and said it himself. And for me, this was clearly an example of Ray Lewis being hurt. His feelings were hurt by that tweet. And that's why he had to jump on Twitter and preach to him. And, you know, when people jumped on him about that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we are with, with him, you know, coming out saying what he said. Ray Lewis has been on the fence for a while. And what Ray Lewis found out was that she tweeted something that we've been saying about him for quite some time. And... That's the thing. Ray Lewis, she's black too. Yeah. That's that's the thing, man. Like the black community has had Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis has been on watch for a minute. He came out against Colin last year, and he slowly, just like Stephen A. Smith, started to shift his his tone as the year went on. And now all of a sudden he's he's behind him. Um it's unfortunate because Q's right, Ray Lewis got caught up. And he could be behind bars right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <sighs> I, I I think Ray Lewis just went back back home, man. He went back to his roots, and <laughs> he felt more comfortable speaking out against a brother than he is supporting him. Ray Lewis does a lot of good things in the community. He's involved. Um, this was one that need his involvement. And Ray Lewis, yeah, that tweet was out there, but. Man, I we, we say this on the show all the time, man. Call that brother. Call Colin and get to the bottom of it. We know Ray Lewis is a tough son of a you-know-what. Ray Lewis is not afraid of anybody. Ray Lewis should be the type of person to be like, all right, yeah, hey, what's up with that? You know, mm-hmm. to call him on the phone and address it. And tell him, like, look, man, this ain't the way. I'm trying to help you. And you basically need to check your girl. Sorry, all the female listeners out there. I don't mean that to be disrespectful, but, you know. but We got you. We got you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to, you know. <laughs> but it's like, yo, yo, man, yo, y'all need to kind of chill. You know, I'm working on something, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help you out. That That's it, man. That's it. it. It's just that simple, but he didn't. Instead, you know, he, he called it off. And Q was right, man. At the, Dog, you got to realize that. He's the owner. You are the player. You run on a football field. You tackle and hit other guys with a ball that carries a ball on a football field, and a majority of them are black. You are a gladiator playing a gladiator, a modern day gladiator sport. That's mm. what you are. So, nah, man, like. He 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 didn't do Colin any favors, so he he need to kill that noise. Roger Goodell, it's very simple, man. He he just look. He, Roger Goodell's like I'm I'm staying out of it. <laughs> that, that's all it was like. I'm not. He, he said it. He said it wrong. I'm not a football expert. When you're running the, the when you know when you're the right when you're running the league. <laughs> yeah, that that, that, that Yo, Kyle, I, have, I, have, I have one quick question. Um, Go ahead. Do you know if the NFL? Do you know the NFLPA? has um filed a motion or 
tried to get garner support for cabinet the way that they have uh for ezekiel elliott you know what q we we actually broached this subject um maybe about a month month and a half ago uh mm-hmm. my understanding was was that the nfl pa works on the behalf of active players but someone who I know that works for the NFL said that that's not true, that the mm-hmm. NFL should – now, he's, op, the operative word here is should – should yeah. act on the be, on the behalf of all players because, in fact, he is a tenured player. You know, uh, so if you look at guys like, let's say um, – um, what's the guy's name? Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy, at the time that he was going through his stuff, he was not an active player. But he was a he was a, t- a player that was you know trying to get on a roster, if you will. Um, right. From what I understand, the NFL has released statements saying that they are you know looking to help Ka- Kaepernick in any way that they can. Now, what mm-hmm. that entails, it, they've been very tight lipped about that. And to be honest, I don't know what communication if they've had any communication with Kaepernick, um, you know, at all. And I'm not necessarily yeah. faulting NFLPA for that. I'm not necessarily faulting Kaepernick for that because, I, from what I understand, it's been kind of hard to get to Kaepernick. But Kaepernick also does, from what I can tell, at least looking from the outside looking in, it looks like he doesn't want anybody speaking for him. He'd rather speak for himself. Now, he hasn't speaking. really, but he's not speaking. You know, he's he released a tweet, um, you know, a couple of tweets about, you know, his efforts and things that he's doing on a social activism right. level. But as far as him, you know, saying, hey, I want a job. And I think that in and of itself sounds dumb. I've heard people say, well, he just needs to come and just tell people what it is that he wants. He wants to play football. I mean, like, who doesn't want to play football? Exactly. He doesn't have to have a press. He doesn't have to have a press conference to, to announce that, you know, like I said, RG3, he posted IG videos of him playing basketball. If somebody called RG3 tomorrow. He didn't have to hold a press conference to let you know he wants to play. Yeah, you and you know, saying? Kyle, the thing is, the thing is, Kyle, that I'm just absolutely disgusted by the whole, obviously the entire situation uh, as the way it's been pro- progressing. Because you look at just the quarterback play over the weekend, and you just see people like Posey, McCown, Dalton, uh, even Boros. Like he's getting a lot of praise, but he was not that good. You know, Tom Savage. And then you're telling me that these guys deserve a shot over Kaepernick. This is obviously down to his social activism. This is, of course. This nothing I mean, to no, do team, with teams would rather they, they, they would rather lose than, than – and then – and I think somebody mentioned, I think it was B, maybe a couple of weeks ago. You know, at this point, if you sign Kaepernick, you pretty much – you know, and I don't know that you're necessarily – you. It's my assumption that if one owner signed Kaepernick, then he would be going against the other uh, 31 owners. But I also think right. that he has a, he's in a situation where, you know, they would they would rather look. I mean, come on, man. Scott Tolzien. I mean, really? Right. You know, I, I watched uh, Mike Glennon play. And I mean, I know the quarterbacks, you know, the Bears have their quarterbacks. But I, I watched Mike Glennon play Sunday. He's try, I mean, like it's it's right. we talked about a couple of weeks last week. In fact, it's like it's it's. Like four really, really good. There's four great quarterbacks in this league, and there's probably like six really good quarterbacks, and then there's probably like three more decent quarterbacks. The rest are trash, and the ones behind them are trash. So you know, I mean, you know, right? It just I just, know. just think, Ken. Just like think about think about what Colin Kaepernick could do a year tutoring Deshaun Watson. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Just and I think people like Shannon Sharp are actually uh, the ones being the ones. That's uh, for Kaepernick by proxy because what from what I'm un- un- understanding from Shannon is he uh, speaks to Colin very frequently and he tells him certain things and he just relays that to America on um, Undisputed but I also wanted to ask you this, this skin because it's like uh, they brought up the fact that he's not going to speak because he doesn't want to quote unquote get on his knees for his job and do you think that it's do you, do, you, do you think it's necessary to say that I won't beg for my job, or do you think it's more of a, you know, he should come out and just give us his position? I personally think that he already has put his position out there and has it wavered, so they should know. I, I think, okay, 
Um, yes, I think he should. Um, the when you say you think he should, what do you, to, what, do you, what do you think he should do, Ken? Yeah, I, I, th- I think he needs to say something. Okay. Going back to the PA statement real quick. Now, I did hear that they have reached out and Colin turned him down. Um, he wants to do it his way. So, uh, and they basically said, "We're here if you need need me." Okay. Anyway, Thanks for clearing that so, up. Um, so there's that. So I, I think it's gotten to the point where it's so so messy, and there's so much misinformation out there that I think he needs to either issue a statement or or say something um, just to set the record straight. And I, I in the beginning I was totally against it. Cutler got a job. All these other people getting jobs without having to say anything. But Colin's situation is unique. And it's, it's one where the media spends a lot of time on it because it obviously must be really, really good for ratings. <laughs> so <laughs> they, um, they continue to just say and put out whatever. And they carry a lot of influence. Um, although I do know that or would like to believe that the NFL owners – don't really listen to all that. Like they have their own, own really like secret, you know, group text that they have. <laughs> so, um, but I do know that at this point, I don't think it would help, but sometimes, man, you just got to set the record straight. So I would like for him to come out and uh, I, I don't know. I'm kind of cool with him not saying anything. I, I believe in doing it your way. And not bucking, you know, bowing down to the system. But at the same time, if people out there saying all this stuff about me, that's not true, then I would have an issue with that. Let's talk about Brady, right? <laughs> Brady <laughs> came out today or or yesterday or whenever, and it was, he said that he hasn't been paying attention to this Colin Kaepernick situation. He gave a very Brady-like answer. You know, for me, you're lying. This is a flat-out lie. There's no way in hell that Tom Brady isn't aware of what's going on with Colin Kaepernick and the situation around Colin Kaepernick. It's unavoidable, especially when you have black teammates. Now, I don't know how things move in New England. Now, when you go to that <laughs> locker room, you know, maybe the black teammates have to hush up and be quiet and, and get within the system and, you know, uh, you know, uh, get on that, you know, put on those chains, you know, and yes, sir, no, sir. Um, that's my, that might be how it worked in New England. I'm not sure. But for Brady to get out there and flat out lie about this situation just, you know, further adds to my distaste for this guy. Um, he doesn't have to support it. He doesn't have to approve of it. Um, he doesn't have to do any of that. He can say, I disapprove of it. He can, but to say I haven't been paying attention is, is BS. And, it just it, it it annoyed me so much because there's no way you haven't had a conversation with anybody about this. Somebody's asking you about this. You are you play in the NFL. You're an NFL quarterback. There's no way someone will be like, hey man, what? So what's going on with Colin Kaepernick? You think he's gonna yeah, play? People who don't oh, even man. watch the NFL talk about it. Right. Every I know you were home talking to Giselle about it. Everybody so, talks about it every night. Yes. Or most nights. So nah, man. I, I I'm even further done with this dude, man. Yeah, I, I I don't um I wasn't surprised. I, I saw a statement. I'm I'm not surprised. Bra- Brady's gonna he's gonna toe the company line. He's not gonna say anything. He's not gonna make any waves. So I I don't I don't value or listen to anything that he has to say. So it, it so it doesn't you know it, so it doesn't bother me the fact that he's you know keeping a PC. Um, as for Ray Lewis, uh, man, it, Ray Lewis broke out the soft shoes, man. I mean, like. He he really you know he he's he's tapping good man he is tapping really really good. Um, Ray Lewis has a lot of nerve. Um, I've watched Ray Lewis from afar transform into you know he was this you know this this troubled linebacker who you know had a troubled pass at Miami you know got into some stuff and then obviously the you know the horrific crime of you know two men being stabbed to death here in the city of Atlanta, um, which, by the way, nobody was ever acquitted for. So, you know, there's two families here who were who are deeply affected and still deeply. The, the wounds still run very deeply 
uh, when you have a guy on trial who, you know, some say that the Atlanta Police Department tried to set Ray Lewis up, uh, thinking that he did not, you know, thinking that he actually did the killing. But, you know, Ray Lewis walked, you know, he 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 was charged with uh, what instruct obstruction of justice, but he still walked. So him and his co-defendants walked. So there were two bodies that laid dead on the ground in the city of Atlanta and nobody went to jail for it. So that's the backdrop of what you should know about Ray Lewis. And then he goes from that to transforming himself into this, I don't know, preacher guy, this motivation guy. And, you know, he goes on and wins the Super Bowl. And he's, you know, obviously a first ballot Hall of Fame. He walks into Canton, you know, his his actions on the field speak for themselves. I'm not even going to speak to that. Uh, the problem that I had with what Ray Lewis said, and I just read part of a quote, but uh, the full quote, Ray Lewis kept using the word we. Now, last time I checked, Ray Lewis is not an employee of the Baltimore Ravens anymore. Um, you know, and, and that really bothered me because I'm like, OK, why do you keep saying we? You're not a rate. You, you're a Raven, you know, alumni, but alumnus, you know, but you're not you're not a part of the management team. And, you know, when the owner said, well, I'm going to talk to people, I'm going to talk to Ray. Yeah, they might talk to you, but then you think that Ray Lewis is actually making decisions for the Baltimore Ravens? Here's the thing. If you really, if the Ravens, let's just, let, let's appease Ray <laughs> in his quote. If they really had an issue with the tweet that was sent by Colin Kaepernick's girlfriend, right, who is, you know, this uh, big time radio disc jockey in New York City. If they had an issue with it, then why not just have her issue an apology, delete the tweet and let's keep it moving. If it were that simple. But for Ray to come out and say, well, you know, about the disrespect and this and that. And we he, he doesn't know what we were trying to do. We were about to sign. I'm like, you're not signing anybody, Ray Lewis, but you're out here tap dancing. That's what you're doing. You know, so to me, the picture was just I thought the picture was dead on point. You know, and, and I understand this. And one thing that I do know, and I'm pretty sure that this has not happened. You mentioned about, you know, the fact that Q, you mentioned about the fact that, you know, Colin Kaepernick speaks with uh, Shannon Sharp. Well, who's one of Shannon Sharp's best friends? Ray Lewis. So you can't tell me that Ray Lewis couldn't get in contact with Colin Kaepernick. At the very least, through Shannon Sharp, he would be able to. But Ray Lewis would rather air this, quote unquote, dirty laundry just because he got a, a meme of himself. Come on, man. Get off your high horse, Ray Lewis. We know who you are. And most people can see through the phony bullshit. At least I can. So I don't I, I take Ray Lewis for what he is, you know. And, you know, if you want to tap dance for the, for the man, that's fine. But all of that comes at a cost. And I'm I'm just not in the cell of my soul. Now, you don't have to you don't. I don't want anybody listening to this think that, that you have to necessarily back Colin Kaepernick. We're not saying that at all. But what I will call out is a fake and a fraud. That's Ray Lewis to me. You know, if you got an issue, if, if you think I'm wrong, tweet me at 12 Kyle. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for all of the commentary. But, yeah, he's a fake and a fraud. So I wasn't to be honest, I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised. This is who Ray Lewis has become. So, you know, while he's on TV talking about we were about to sign him, we, you weren't about to do nothing. Because if it was that simple, all it would have taken was a phone call. Hey, take the take the, the, the tweet down, issue an apology, and let's keep it push, pushing. The Ravens can use Colin Kaepernick. There's at least seven or eight teams that could use Colin Kaepernick, but they don't want to. And, and I understand. And at this point, and I mentioned on a previous podcast, I don't think Colin Kaepernick is going to get signed. So, you know, and, and I respect anyone who's listening, who is boycotting. A couple of people hit me up last week. Well, I'm boycotting the NFL. Okay, cool. I, hey, more power to you. I understand. I'm not, I don't begrudge anybody who's boycotting the NFL for those reasons. But understand this, if you're boycotting NFL, this probably is not going to happen. It's rare for people to get signed once the season has started, particularly at that position. No, they're not going to sign him. 
you know, so if you want to keep boycotting info, I mean, knock yourself out. It's, I'm not I'm not mad at you for that. But understand, Ray Lewis and Roger Goodell, you know, it's, it's a show. It's a clown show. So, you know, when you're looking at the circus, understand what it is that you're looking at. That's all I got to say. All right, let's move on to the NBA, man. Uh, Kobe Bean Bryant, he is, it was announced today that he is getting his numbers retired. And I say numbers as in plural. As many of you know, Kobe Bryant, during his illustrious career with the uh, LA Lakers, wore the number eight, and he wore the number 24. Um, You know, and I, I don't know of any other team that has retired two numbers for a player, but, you know, it can happen. I mean, hell. Miami Heat retired <laughs> the number 23 for a player that didn't even wear the jersey in it <laughs> for their team. But they just love Jordan, I guess. So they retired the number 23. So nobody will wear the number 23 for the Miami Heat, given the fact that Michael Jordan played for the uh, Chicago Bulls and never played for the Heat. So anything is possible when it comes to retiring numbers. That being said, the question I want to throw to you guys, and Ken, I'll start with you first. If it was your decision, and you could only retire one number, which number would it be and why? Eight or 24? Uh, 24. Um, to be honest, I don't even remember him wearing eight. <laughs> really? I rem- nah, I don't. I-, I remember 24 more than than eight. When did he wear the the eight? Uh, oh. he won. He, he wore, yeah, he wore eight. I think he won three ring. The, the, those were the Shaq, Shaq years. Right? Shaq years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, huh. I take that back then. I, I'll retire eight, so he'll always be attached yeah, to Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. He, he, he need, we, we need to attach him to that Shaq legacy, man. <laughs> not, not the, that, not the, the Jordan two four clone. Uh, you know, era with with twenty four, which is why I was gonna say I would do twenty four because. He, you know, clearly modeled his game after after Jordan, and it speaks to his level of talent to be able to go out there and do it. Like, there's a lot of people that tried, very few people. As a matter of fact, uh, no one has ever come as close as Kobe has, um, even though he was uh, not as effective at it as Jordan was. But he had the game. But um, but yeah, man, let's 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 be petty. Let's be petty today, <laughs> and let's let's uh, retire number eight. <laughs> I'm all for the petty. I'm all for the petty. Q, what about you? Uh, which one you you retire, man? You're a big basketball fan. Uh, 24 or number eight? That's his man's, man. Kobe's. His I know man's. that's his man's in them. Man, if I had to, probably 24. Um, I think that was the one. That was the number in which he proved that it wasn't just Shaq. It was also Pau Gasol and Metal World Peace. No, I'm joking. Um, but when it comes to uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but no, it, it wasn't just Shaq. He came into, I guess you could say his own, even 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 though this was very Jordan clone, like, uh, like Ken said. But he came into his own, and the team revolved completely around him. Um, I think he, I think he, what, he got two rings, then they got an MVP with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I look at number eight Kobe as, like, the killer, like, assassin Kobe. Like, you know, the young Mamba in training. And I look at 24 as, like, the grown Mamba where it's like, um, I can run this team now. I'm, I can be sort of a leader, even though he's not better than LeBron at leading. But, you know, I can be <laughs> a leader. Um, I can, you know, get a team to the finals. And uh, I think I just remember 24 being special because of uh, that one uh, game winner he hit over D Wade. Um, mm. That was, that was pretty special. And also the, you know, the 60 points in, in your last game, like, you know, you can't really top a better Hollywood ending than that. Obviously outside of winning a championship, there's no other way I could see a Kobe Bryant career ending than wearing the number 24 and scoring 60 in your final game at uh, LA. So it's like definitely 24 for me. But I can see the argument for eight because, Kyle, you remember those finals better than I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Shaq got in foul trouble, Kobe had, had, had to put the team on on his back. Um, that, that was when Kobe could, could jump out the gym 
You know, he was doing behind the back, you know, through through the leg layups, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, tossing off glass to himself. That was an all-star game, Kobe, uh, where, you know, he, he went, him and AI and Vince was going at it. Like, that was, you mm. know, great time. And I think that he's, number eight is more of the high flyer to me. But 24 is like the, the champion Kobe to me for some reason. I, I look at those first three finals more as a conjunction of Shaq and Kobe, mm-hmm. but more on Shaq. But I look at 24 as like those are Kobe's two rings in which he had a team that was built for him. Okay. That was okay. after the that... rape charges, right? Yeah. 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 Those were, yeah, that was, that was after he was uh, wilding out in Denver. Yeah, um, and after, uh, after he dry uh, snitched on Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, like like Ken said it. Now if we're gonna go with the with the petty, and I'm all for the petty. You can call me Petty Murphy. Um, I go with eight because that was the one where he was wearing that when Chris Childs gave him that two piece. <laughs> Why are we so, expecting Kobe so much tonight? <laughs> Hey man, anybody knows me knows that I'm a I'm a huge Kobe Bryant hater. But I will say this: in saying that, man, I I have grown to appreciate uh, the greatness of Kobe being Bryant. Man, um, seriously, if I had to, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go 24 because I like you said if, for the obvious reasons. I think those earlier championships were you know tied to Shaq. Um, and I meant to I meant to actually throw this out to you guys via text the other day. I saw something and I'll have to go back and look and see. I saw it on Twitter. I think like their averages, I think in the final Shaq was like 31 points a game and Kobe's like 28, 29 points a game. And like, you know how like you remember seeing those finals, but I don't. Re- and I remember them dominating the teams that they played, but I didn't I, I didn't really remember the averages like that. And I'm like, damn, they were like, I mean. And I told, like, one of my best friends is a a huge Lakers fan. And I told him, when Shaq started with the trade demands, I told him right then and there, I said, look, if you guys let Shaq go, I said, neither of them will never get more than six rings. I said, but if if they can somehow stay together, I said, this team could run off seven or eight titles by themselves. And I don't and I don't think that's, you know, was a far stretch. I think they could. I mean, they are. They will obviously still go down as one of the greatest duos to ever play the game. But I think, you know, ring wise, Kobe, he surpasses Mike if Kobe and Shaq stay together. Uh, I think it was fortunate that Kobe was able to get two more rings. You know, I don't want to say on his own, but I mean, without Shaq, I thought that was incredible. So that's why I would probably give the nod to the 24. And did he get the 81 points in the, with the eight or the 24? I can't remember. Okay. That was eight. No, no. That was no, eight. No, okay. Was okay. Eight. okay. Okay. That was, that was when Jalen Rose was still in the league. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I would go with 24. But um, but yeah, man, I, I think, you know, had they stayed together, and I, well, obviously we know why they didn't. Um, Shaq was jealous. And uh, Kobe snitched. And so, you know, they they couldn't coexist. But I, I just kind of wish that they would have even not even though I don't like the Lakers. I mean, I, I actually hate the Lakers, but just from a fan's perspective, from afar, I would have loved to have seen how that would have played out over a period of time, because I think if they had stayed together. Yeah, I think eight, nine titles for the both of them easily. Um, but, you know, they're, they're together. And I'm pretty sure when they uh, retire Kobe's jersey, it's going to be a. Uh, December 18th against the Warriors um, at uh, Staples Center. Um, I'm pretty sure Shaq's going to be there. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure Phil Jackson's going to be there. And, you know, a lot of the teammates, um, Derek Fisher, a.k.a. the Dirty Mac, he'll be there. Uh, so watch a girl. Um, but, yeah, it's <laughs> – but it's – um, it's uh, I Kobe, man, he's incredible, man. I mean, there's no such thing as the next Jordan, but he he was he he was close. And I mean, and again, this is coming from a hater, but um, I respect his greatness. Respect his greatness. But uh, yeah, if it were up to me, I probably I probably retire at 24. But you know, the Lakers are gonna put both numbers in the rafters, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a celebration for Laker Nation. They don't have much to celebrate this time, but um, yeah, man, a trip down nostalgia, Kobe Bryant. Going into the uh, Lakers ring of uh, excuse me jerseys of honor, if you will, getting hung up in Staples Center. Uh, as always, we'd like to thank you all for checking out our podcast. Uh, 
We like to do this every week. We want to thank you. Make sure that you not only listen to the podcast, but subscribe, uh, share, and then, you know, pass the word. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, It's about time for us to get up out of here. Before we do that, uh, it's time for our closing thoughts. Uh, Q, you're up first. What's your closing thought this week? Uh, My closing thought here is um, Jamel Hill. Oh, yes. Um, Good Lord. Okay. Very, very quickly. <laughs> bro, 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 take very, take your time. Quickly. Take your time. Okay. What I, what, so what I'm going to say here is that if the people are getting in trouble, if people are getting in trouble for telling the truth, then what are you being told on the daily? That's something that we have to address. When it comes to people like Jamel Hill, people who speak up and use their platform and use their spot in the daily you know, discourse and our daily lives on TV that we see them every single day, when they use their voice and use their platform to speak up for what they view is right and for what they view is helping marginalized people and or marginalized groups, then you have to applaud that. Whether you agree or whether you disagree, you if you're going to stand by free speech, then you, need, then you need to stand by free speech all the time. Now, Jamel Hill went out on Twitter and she called Donald Trump a, quote unquote, white supremacist. And she said that he hangs around with other white supremacists. Now, regardless of who you voted for, regardless of who you want to be president, regardless of your politics. Um, when a guy stands on, you know, the White House um, correspondence uh, uh, booth and says that there were good guys on both sides, <laughs> Charles Will, I really don't know what you think that is, but at the very least, that sounds like some nonsense. When a guy hires you know, Steve Bannon to be his chief strategist and Steve Bannon has made up uh, kooky articles on his uh, website, Breitbart, blaming Jewish people, blaming black people for, you know, the economy, blaming uh, immigrants and minorities, specifically of Spanish speaking descent, blaming those people of uh, for the reason why of there are certain problems in America. When you go out of your way like Donald Trump to say that you assault women without asking for consent and you touch them in places that shouldn't be named. When you go out on TV, like Donald Trump has said that Mexicans are coming across the border and they're quote unquote rapists and they're bringing crime and drugs. I don't know what else you would call that, but you could see how Jamel Hill at least can come to the conclusion that that is at least a little bit racist. Now call it with what you want, but at the end of the day, this is an issue in which you either want people to have a voice or you don't. She's being met with a lot of vitriol, a lot of disdain for uh, what she said on Twitter in an interaction with one of her followers or just a guy, uh, probably it wasn't even probably one of her followers, but I wouldn't be su- surprised because there are probably more people who follow her and Michael that hate on what they say than, you know, people who don't, but she called it what it was in her mind. And in her mind, she believes she's speaking up for people who don't have the platform to say that. So for ESPN to, Uh, reprimand her and put out that statement today saying that they've spoken to her and it's being handled accordingly. I think that's just complete BS and it's just so disingenuous and see through. If you can't call out somebody because if you can't call out a guy like Donald Trump, because you're afraid of alienating a certain demographic, then I would need to ask the people who are the heads of ESPN why in the world do you find that demographic necessary to your success in the first place? What type of demographic are you trying to cater to that you can't call out basic racism and or just at the least basic bigotry and ignorance? If you can't call that out and call a spade a spade, then how can you brand yourself 
as an inclusive, as a diverse, and as an accepting of all ideas of a network that ESPN promotes itself to be. How can you put Michael and Jamel on TV every day and then market their blackness and, uh, you know, make money off of their slang and make money off of how they move and how they speak to their guests and basically quantifying, you know, their basically their swag. How can you put that on TV, make money off that? But the moment that those people, Michael and Jamel, I was speaking of, put on, as they say, and and show up for the people that are being affected by the things that we're seeing in the news lately from Charlottesville now t- to now, how can you call yourself inclusive and accepting of those two, especially Jamel in this situation, and then turn around and say that you're going to handle the situation accordingly and this does not represent the views of ESPN? Instead of saying that, I would have liked to have heard this does not represent the views of ESPN, but we completely back our uh, correspondent Jamel Hill in the way that she believes in her political views. That is her personal beliefs. And we believe in inclusive and we believe in the exchanging of new ideas that are not meant to target or hurt, but to educate. And that's all Jamel Hill does. She doesn't curse people out on, on her timeline. She doesn't, you know, uh, say unnecessary inflammatory things towards anybody she calls a spade a spade much like she does in her commentary so my f- closing thoughts are this we have to support those who show up for us I stand with Jamel Hill and I hope everyone else does too because we need and this is a black woman here so we need to stand up 100% and I hope everyone else sees that this is the moment to also stand behind a woman like Jamel Hill, who is already behind the eight ball for being black, but she's also behind the eight ball for being a woman in the sports industry. So that double whammy that, that she's already seeing is going to come down on her twice as hard if we don't show up. It's time to show up. The way that we showed up for Colin Kaepernick, we got to show up for Jamel Hill equally as hard, probably 10 times harder. Great point. Great point, Q. What about you, Ken? What's your uh, final thought? Um, man, I, I hope the sister's okay. I hope they don't let her go, man. Um, no, they're not. They're not so, going to let her go. Yeah, they, they need her. She's definitely a, a great talent and a, a fun person, an entertaining person uh, to listen to. She's, uh, she's, she's good, man. Um, Cleveland Indians tonight. Mm. Won their 20th game in a row. Uh, shout out to Cleveland. Um, probably not going to amount for anything, but hey, it's a <laughs> it's a great accomplishment nonetheless. Um, and conversely, the Los Angeles Dodgers have lost 11 in a row. Mm. I think. See you now. Watch. Cleveland's going to lose one. They probably lose five to ten. We talked about them, and then they went on a losing streak. <laughs> right, guys, you're right, too. Yeah, you're right, Ken. Hey, we did talk about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about it. Everybody started talking about the Dodgers. I guess they can't handle. This was like a month ago. <laughs> I, I know the pressure, man. They they can't win a game anymore, and and uh, and it's it's crazy. They're losing to bad teams, the Giants. Right. You know, and and it's it's. I'm like, what is going on? Their best pitchers are losing. Kershaw lost. Wood loss, Rich Hill loss, uh, Medea, uh, like the bullpen can't hold the lead. It's it's incredible to watch them get all their praise and then they just toss it away. I don't know, maybe they just can't handle, handle the pressure of of being successful. We will see when the playoffs come along. But yeah, we got two teams going in opposite directions. But um, but if you're the Dodgers, you'll take your losing streak now as opposed to the playoffs. So um, we'll, we'll see how this play out uh, the rest of this season. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, my final thought will be uh, actually piggybacking on what Q said. I really don't have much to offer. Uh, I will say this much, though, uh, in response to Jamel Hill's uh, comments about your mans. Um, I find it interesting that people should really stop and take a listen or even take a look at Jamel Hill's 
uh, Twitter timeline. Don't look at what she's tweeting, but look at what people tweet her. And she's spoken about this on several occasions. Um, the amount of tweets that she gets, you know, the stick to sports and this and that. And then, you know, and not even when she's talking about something, quote unquote, controversial, you should be fired. And we all know ESPN did like a massive layoff earlier this year. And there were so many people saying that, you know, she shouldn't, she doesn't deserve her job. She doesn't know sports. And then there are the tweets that are, you know, just downright despicable. I mean, I'm talking about tweets, talking about, you know, men sending tweets saying they would rape her and they'd kill. Well, I don't know if it's gotten as far as killing her, but you know, something that, you know, most people who have keyboard courage would say. The interesting thing is as a woman in sports, she's subjective to this and, you know, her counterpart doesn't get these kind of tweets and he won't. You know why? Because the cowards who send these tweets would never say that to another man. But women, particularly a black woman, a black woman in sports, which is such a rarity in and of itself, is, you know, they feel like it's open game. Here's what I'll say about Jamel Hill's comments. I am I find it very interesting that uh, people are up in arms that she called Donald Trump a white supremacist. Uh, Instead of calling Donald Trump out (laughs) for being a white supremacist, uh, as Q just eloquently spoke about what happened in Charlottesville and Trump's comments about what happened in Charlottesville. Well, if you want to know what happened in Charlottesville, ask you. He was there. He, he, you know, it's not like CNN, but he was there. He was right there on the ground. And he, the last time he was on his podcast, he told us exactly on air and off air what happened. So, you know, again, instead of being mad about mad about what Jamel Hill said, take issue with the person that she's talking about. You know, we got an old saying and and, and I, I'm just I'm really, really surprised at people because, you know, they're so quick to defend. Well, maybe you're defending because maybe she's telling the truth and the truth hurts. And we have an old saying in the South. A hit dog will holler. You go look on Twitter and it's a whole bunch of hollering going on. Thank you. For checking out another edition of the Dead End Sports Podcast. I'm your boy 12 Kyle. In his absence, my man BZ430. FIFO, got to thank my boy Q for coming through. And, of course, the homie Ken. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. 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 Peace.